Hi guys, Yasas que Carlos Irzate to another episode of Dimitro's Dishes. Today we're making pasta socolatina. It's a chocolate pastry that's served in dessert shops and in cafes throughout Greece and even here in America. If you go to Greek owned pastry shops, you have definitely seen a slice of this decadent goodness. It's moist, delicious chocolate cake that's also topped with a nice, luscious chocolate cream and then a layer of chocolate ganache. Many times on the sides, you'd see, you'll see some sprinkles, chocolate sprinkles. We're making it a little different. Today, I'm showing you this very easy way to make it so you can make it for your next dinner party or even for a birthday party. It makes for a great birthday cake. Everyone's gonna love it. This is gonna be the best chocolate cake they've ever had. Let's get started. So we start off with the pastry cream because we need it to cool down. So we're making vanilla pastry cream and I've made it so many times on the channel. We start off with two cups of milk, pour that in a saucepan. You're gonna need three quarters of a cup of sugar, but you're gonna put some of it in the saucepan right now and the rest is gonna go with the eggs. The reason we put it in with the milk put in and don't stir it is because it's gonna keep the milk from burning. It's not gonna to stick to the bottom of the pan. This is a trick that I've learned from a pastry chef and I wish I knew it earlier on. Anyway, put that in there with a little sprinkle of salt, put it over medium heat and let it get steaming hot. In the meantime, you're gonna separate four eggs. All you need are the egg yolks for this recipe. You could save the whites for some cookies for another day. We don't eat egg whites in here, you guys. No egg white omelets or scrambled egg whites. No, 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 I'm gonna use it for cookies or some dessert. Anyway, whisk the eggs together with the remaining sugar, four tablespoons of cornstarch, which is gonna thicken the pastry cream and make it nice and smooth and thick. And then I'm also gonna add a half a cup of heavy whipping cream. Whisk that all up together until it's smooth. As soon as the milk is steaming hot, go ahead and pour it into the egg mixture so we can raise their temperature. Whisk that all together, then pour everything back into the pot and you're gonna make sure that you're gonna stand over the pot and whisk it constantly until it thickens. As soon as it starts to boil, it's gonna thicken and then take it off of the heat, whisk in one and a half to two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract, transfer it into another bowl, cover it with some plastic wrap and set it aside to cool completely. I usually make a double batch of this because many times when I make this, <laughs> it disappears while it's warm before I'm ready to use it. My kids love it. I really love it, it's irresistible, it's so good. Anyway, set it aside, you want it to cool completely. Once it comes to room temperature, put it in the fridge because you want this to be nice and cold. Next, we're gonna make the syrup. This is a very moist cake. As is, it's going to be super moist, but I had a bakery for 10 years and we always brush our cakes with syrup even though they were moist. It just give, makes them extra moist and extra soft and just extra zumera, like we say in Greek. And so to do that, the syrup is super simple. All you need is half a cup of water in a little saucepan, half a cup of sugar, half a teaspoon of coffee syrup, because coffee really brings out the chocolatiness of desserts. You're gonna whisk that all together and bring it to a boil. As soon as it comes to a boil and the sugar is dissolved, take it off of the heat and whisk in a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract and there you have it, your syrup is ready. Now we're gonna move on to making the cake, which is also super simple to make. Okay, so for the cake, you're gonna need wet ingredients and dry ingredients, and you can take out your stand mixer, it's gonna make life easier, but I'm gonna show you how easy it is to just whisk everything all together in, in a big bowl. So let, let me start off with the dry ingredients. For the dry ingredients, we have two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, that is 370 grams. I have one and a half cups of cocoa powder, that's 160 grams. Dutch processed cocoa powder is the best and you wanna make sure that it's unsweetened because we're, if, you, if it's sweetened, it's gonna be way too sweet. Then I have one teaspoon of baking powder and two teaspoons of baking soda and I also have a teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna whisk the dry ingredients together because if I start off with the wet ingredients, I'm gonna to have to use a different whisk and then that's more things to wash. We don't wanna do that. Okay, so for the wet ingredients, I have three ounces or 90 grams of semi-sweet chocolate. And to that, you wanna add one and a half cups of coffee. If you don't already have coffee ready, like leftover from the morning, all you need is one and a half cups of water and like two teaspoons of instant coffee will do. Pour that over the chocolate and it'll melt it. Okay, then over here I have three cups of granulated sugar. I'm just gonna add the coffee and chocolate mixture. We're gonna whisk that all together. 
Then you need three quarters of a cup of vegetable oil. I like to use light olive oil, not the cold press, because the cold press, extra virgin Greek olive oil, has too much flavor and a little bit of bitterness, which doesn't go in this recipe. It overpowers it, so you want a flavorless oil. Whisk that all together. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. One cup of plain yogurt. Half a cup of heavy whipping cream. And three whole eggs, make sure that they're at room temperature. Just whisk them up really well before you add them in. It would have been better if I would have put this in with the oil and the granulated sugar um, first and whisk that all together. But um, sometimes if you're adding really, really hot liquid, uh, it it'll cook them and make them, mess them up basically. And then all you have to do is add the dry ingredients in a few batches, just whisk in a little bit at a time until it's all incorporated and all mixed in and even. Try not to over mix because then uh, you won't have a nice and light cake. And it's a really thin batter, but it's gonna make for a very moist cake. Now let's get our pans ready. So I'm using two pans. I'm using a nine by 13 inch baking pan, which is the one that we're gonna to use to serve the, the pastry slices in. But I'm also using a nine inch round um, cake pan. This is a cheesecake pan, spring form pan, whatever you wanna call it. You, can, it, you don't have to use a spring form pan. This is just what I have on hand right now. You can use a nine or an eight inch cake pan as long as it's deep, like a, at least three inches deep. This one we're not gonna use. It's just gonna be extra cake that we're gonna freeze for a later time. But if you're making this cake, you wanna have some leftovers. So just grease the pans. You could use the vegetable oil or you can use baking spray. And it would be a good idea to put some parchment paper inside of this, cut out a piece of parchment paper, but <laughs> I'd rather just regret it later. I don't have time to cut parchment paper right now and I didn't get it ready. Okay, so just pour halfway um, up the sides of the pan. If you pour more than that, you're not gonna have any room once it bakes for the topping because this does rise. Put in a little bit more. And of course, instead of using the nine inch round cake pan, you could always do two nine by 13 inch pans and just freeze one and have it for a later use. Or if you're um, feeding a big crowd, then you could just make two cakes. Just double the pastry cream and everything else that we're making later on. The oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. These are gonna bake on the center rack for about 35 minutes or until a tester that's inserted into the center of the cake, a wooden skewer or something like that, comes out clean or with some moist crumbs attached to it. Don't overbake it, but you don't want to underbake it either. I'll show what it looks like as soon as it comes out. The cake took exactly 35 minutes to bake, the rectangular tray did. The one in the round pan, because there was a little bit more cake batter in it and it was deeper, it did take an additional about 10 minutes, so I left it in there to bake until it was totally ready. Once the cake comes out of the oven, you want the round one to cool completely because we're not using that today. And then the one in the rectangular pan, go ahead and pierce it all around with a toothpick and then brush all of the syrup on top of that. Trust me, it's, it's well worth it. It's gonna keep it really nice and moist and juicy. If you wanna skip that step, you can. You're just gonna end up with a little bit, uh, the cake won't be as moist, basically. That's it, I'll leave it up to you. Give it a try, this is dessert after all. It's supposed to be sweet and decadent. Then you wanna set the cake aside and let it cool completely. You can do this step a day ahead of time and just wrap it with plastic and store it in the refrigerator or you can quick cool it in the freezer if you have space for about 30 or 40 minutes. Make sure that your, your pastry cream is nice and cold. You want everything to be nice and cold. Then the next step is to make the ganache. The ganache is a shiny chocolate that's gonna go on top, but it is also gonna flavor the, the whipped cream and the pastry cream um, and make it chocolate flavored, so you're gonna need a good amount 
12 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate is what you need. If you want more flavor, you could do half semi-sweet and half bittersweet. It's up to you. You use the best quality chocolate that you can get. And you don't want to use chocolate chips for this because they have stabilizers and it's going to be too thick. So use baking bars or whatever you can find that's not a chocolate chip that melts nicely and smoothly. Heat up one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream just until it comes to a boil. Then go ahead and pour the heavy cream over the chocolate. Let it sit for a few seconds. Also, you want to add a little bit of coffee to that. Instant coffee is great. You need about half a teaspoon of coffee is all you need. You won't taste that it's there, but it's going to intensify the flavor of the chocolate. Whisk that all together until the chocolate is melted and the ganache is nice and smooth and shiny and just set it aside. The final step to this is making the whipped cream. We're going to make vanilla whipped cream, but we're going to turn it into chocolate whipped cream and we're going to blend that together with the pastry cream to lighten it up to make what's known um, in, in European baking as Bavarian cream. It's a light version of a pastry cream and it is so delicious. It's similar to mousse. So you're going to need some heavy whipping cream first. Two cups of heavy whipping cream. You want to make sure that it's very cold. A half a cup of confectioner sugar, also known as powdered sugar, and two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. And you're going to whisk that all together until the cream is nice and thick and fluffy. Start off on slow so you don't end up wearing it. <laughs> And then as it thickens, increase the speed to high. And it happens really quickly. Now we're going to flavor this and make this chocolate whipped cream. What you're going to do is you're going to add a couple of tablespoons of the ganache in here. And you can taste it as you go. So let's start with three. That is very good. I'm not going to add any more because the pastry cream is also getting some chocolate. So I don't want to overdo it if there's such a thing. So my pastry cream is nice and chilled. I had it in the refrigerator and like I said before, somebody got to it and they took a couple tablespoons out of here. So now I'm going to also flavor this with some chocolate. Four tablespoons should be good enough. I am going to need some ganache for the topping so I can't use all of it. It looks like it needs a tiny bit more. And with a different spoon, I'm going to taste it. Mm. Perfect. Okay, this is done. Now I'm going to take some of the whipped cream and I'm going to put it in here to lighten it up. switch to the whisk because I'm impatient. <laughs> that is looking good. I'm going to save the rest of this whipped cream in here because it's going to be what I'm going to use to decorate the top. But it's looking like it needs to be mixed up a little bit and maybe it needs a little drop more of ganache. That looks good. So the whipped cream that's left in here, this chocolate whipped cream, is going to go in this pastry bag that's fitted with a star attachment. All of these links are going to be on the blog post. They're always underneath in the recipe card. So if you need to get them online, you can, or at least you could see what they look like. So you can get them from a local kitchen supply store or something like that. Now, an easy way to get the cream in the bag is to let the bag sit in a tall drinking glass and fold the sides over. But I have been doing this for over 10 years, cake decorating, so it's easy for me, but that's a little trick if you need it. This is going to be ready to go. So now we're just going to spread all of this cream on top of the cake. One of these offset spatulas really help. They're great for cake decorating too, so it's a good tool to have in the kitchen. This is just going to go in the freezer for 10 minutes so the cream can set and be nice and cold. And then I'm just going to warm this ganache up just a little bit until it's a little more runnier than this. It's going to make it so much easier to spread. While it's cooling, I'm going to clean up a little bit and then we're just going to finish this off. 
Okay, so the cake is nice and chilled and I popped the ganache in the microwave for 20 seconds and after the first 10 seconds I just mixed it. You want to be very careful when warming chocolate up so, um, because if it burns, you're just not going to be able to use it. It's going to taste horrible. Okay, so pour the ganache over the top of the cake. This is so much easier than making a, a layered cake and you get, you get all of the flavor. And if you're a beginner, you don't have to worry about decorating it or frosting it or anything like that. And carefully spread the ganache on top. Don't push down all the way to the bottom because then you're going to end up picking up some of the frosting. Okay, now this is going to go back in the refrigerator or the freezer for about 10-15 minutes or until the ganache sets so that way we can cut through it and decorate it. So once the chocolate is set, you can go ahead and cut it into serving pieces. It's going to be all up to you how many pieces you want to have on here, how big you want them to be, and you can do a better job <laughs> of portioning it out than I did. Okay, so the longer it sets in the freezer, the easier it's going to be to slice. Okay, I'm not even gonna try to cut them smaller than this, otherwise it'll just fall apart. This is good. Some people, whoever wants a small piece, will have some small pieces, bigger pieces, bigger pieces. In the end, you can take this all out of the tray and put them on serving platters if you want. Okay, so now to decorate it, you can do little rosettes on top. What I like to do is I like to do little stars. So you just squeeze out the cream and you can make three or four on the corners, any corner that you want. And there you have it. All right, so once it's done and it's set, you can go ahead and serve it. It is ready to be served as is, but the longer it sits in the refrigerator, the more the cream is gonna be a little bit easier to work with. But I got my first piece out easily, surprisingly. Again, you can do a lot of these steps ahead of time and I'll make sure to list everything on the blog post so that way it's easy peasy for you. It is time for the taste test. Mmm, so chocolatey, so moist and creamy. Layla, you want to take a taste? Yeah. Mmm, you can't taste the coffee in this, but it just makes it so chocolatey and so delicious. The best chocolate cake you'll ever have. What do you think, Layla? One moist. thumb up, two, th <laughs> two thumbs up. What do you think? Okay, she had to think about it. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section down below. The exact measurements are on the website. This tastes really good with a good cup of Greek coffee. Click over here to see that recipe and I'll see you right over there. Yes, us.